Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with some budget opera reissues or mid-price opera reissues by DECA. And this is one of my absolute favorites. Oh, this is so much fun. It's Massenet's Esclarmond. Now, Massenet is just so horribly underrated. He was a wonderful opera composer who wrote gorgeous operas with great tunes. And this was a Joan Sutherland vehicle. There she is. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know. Someone once described her as always looking the same in opera, sort of like a Christmas tree before they turn the lights on. And this is sort of the locus classicus for that. That's some costume she's wearing, isn't it? You're not going to believe the plot. The plot is sort of like this. Esclarmonde is the princess of Byzantium. And in fact, this opera contains you know, a hymn to her, which is sort of like the national anthem of Byzantium. It goes like, Oh, divine Esclarmonde, we think that you're the best. Well, that's sort of like my English translation. Anyway, Esclarmonde um, cannot cannot reveal herself. She's so beautiful, but she must remain veiled to keep her powers. She has magic powers, naturally. Her father gave them to her. And she has to remain veiled until she's 20. But she's in love with the knight Roland, who's running around fighting the Saracens. And she wafts him over to her enchanted isle so they can meet and, you know, fool around every night. However, she must remain veiled. And she convinces him that she loves him and he thinks he loves her, even though he can't see her face. And so, meanwhile, um, Roland defeats the Saracens and he's uh, awarded the, the, in the city of Blois. And the, the king of Blois gives, gives Roland his daughter in marriage, but he, well, he turns him down because he's really in love with Esclarmonde and the bishop figures it out and everybody gets cursed and they say they're going to get, they're going to get like, you know, whatever happens to you when you're like, you know, the church doesn't like you. You know, you get disenfranchised or, or yeah, you know, whatever happens to you there, um, discharged. And so and so Roland has to renounce Esclarmonde, and Esclarmonde has to renounce Roland, and then he has to go fight in the tournament, and he wins the tournament, and he wins the princess, and then he realizes when she picks up her veil that it was Esclarmonde who she loved all along, and he loves her, and she loves him, and it all ends happily ever after, and they all sing the Byzantine national anthem. So that's the story. Mm-hmm. It, who cares? The music is fabulous. It was, Esclarmonde was a vehicle, I think it was written for Sybil Sanderson, the great American soprano from the end of the 19th and beginning of the 20th century that everybody in France was in love with. And it's got some like high, 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 high notes. Like, ooh, baby, like really up there when she's summoning her spirits to defend her and do, do her bidding and whatnot. Oh, it's just unbelievably silly. It really is. But this was the kind of thing back in the day um, that was so admirable about Joan Sutherland because Joan Sutherland was, you know, somebody who people would build productions around because people would go to see her. And she was very interested in, the, in the, a Massenet revival and doing these operas. I mean, they did what? The, Le, Le Roi de Lahore. And they did, she did a bunch of Massenet things anyway, whatever they were. And, uh, you know, this is conducted, of course, by, by Richard Bonning, um, naturally and uh, with the National Philharmonic, and it's splendidly recorded. It was sort of toward the end of Sutherland's career, but she was in very good shape for this. And you also get uh, Huguette Tourangeau as Parseis, and Clifford Grant as the Emperor Forcas, love the names, and Giacomo Aragal as Roland, and Louis Quilico as, as Leveque de Blois, the Blois guy. And Aeneas is Ryland Davies and Robert Lloyd. And you know all the usual people who are in these productions. They were fabulous. They really were. I, I remember when this came out, and I was so excited to hear it. I just loved it. I mean, it was such silliness. But who cares? It's a fairy tale. Operas work best when they're unbelievable. Because opera requires the willful suspension of, of unbelief anyway. Um, because the plots are all nonsense and because people don't sing at each other naturally. So you might as well go for it, right? And this was Messian at his most voluptuous and extravagant, kind of like Thais. You know, it has that sort of exotic character. And I don't think it, it moves slowly at all. It's lots of action and stuff happening here. Um, let's see, it's an, an hour and 55 minutes and 52 seconds. So it's two hours and, and, and 35 minutes. And boy, I just loved every minute of it. And you probably will too. 
It's a terrific mid-price reissue, and you can get the libretto available online with this CD. It always says that. It just doesn't tell you where to find them unless you go to, uh, let's see, decaclassics.com backslash opera, where it may be hanging out. I wonder if it says something in the, the perfectly worthless booklet. Well, you do get a plot synopsis. Um, no, it doesn't tell you where the libretto is. Wait a minute. Oh, put this CD in your computer and go to decaclassics.com slash opera to get the libretto and English translations, plus bonus audio material free. An internet connection is needed. Libretto suitable for mobile devices and printable PDF download. So there you go. That's the answer. So give yourself some esclarmande. You won't be sorry. Keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.